It's out of order. Yes, I can read the sign. I'm just pondering the implications. <laughs> I think it implies that the elevator doesn't work. <laughs> Again, I can read the sign. But the sign and the tape are covered with a layer of dust, which indicates that the elevator has been non-functional for a significant amount of time, which suggests either a remarkable passivity among the, I assume, 24 to 36 residents of this building based on the number of mailboxes and given typical urban population density, or a shared delusion of functionality. You must be Leonard's mother. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I must be, but yes. Um, I'm Penny. I'm his neighbor. Oh, Dr. Beverly Hofstadter. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, you're a handshaker. Interesting. <laughs> uh, why don't you come with me? I'll walk you to the apartment. Oh, all right. Would you like to exchange pleasantries on the way? <laughs> yeah, sure, I guess. All right, you start. <laughs> OK, you know, I've always been curious. What was Leonard like when he was little? Oh, I think you mean young. He's always been little. <laughs> OK, what was he like when he was young? You'll have to be more specific. Oh. Uh, OK, like five or six. Five. Oh, well, at that age, he was well enmeshed in what Freud would call the phallic stage of psychosexual development. An outmoded theory, of course, but the boy did spend most of his waking hours with a tight grasp on his penis. <laughs> Leonard mentioned you were a psychiatrist. Well, that is one of my degrees. My primary field is neuroscience. Oh, well, I'm an actress. <laughs> why? <laughs> what, what do you mean, why? Hmm. Well, there are studies that suggest that many who go into the performing arts suffer from an external locus of identity. <laughs> You value yourself only as others value you, which is often the result of unmet childhood emotional needs. Oh, well, I had a wonderful childhood. Tell me about it. <laughs> I know my dad wanted a boy. <laughs> I, I just, I tried being good at sports, but I hated getting dirty. <laughs> and then I'm assuming you entered adolescence. Uh -huh. He called me slugger until I got my first training bra, and then he just stopped playing catch with me. I wasn't slugger anymore. Your mother's here? If you want to have intercourse with that girl, find out what kind of cologne her father wore. Good to see you, Mother. Leonard rarely talks about his incredibly successful brother and sister. Please don't go there, Howard. I understand that, unlike Leonard, they're at the top of their respective fields. Boy, you suck. Well, uh, Leonard's younger brother, Michael, is a tenured law professor at Harvard, and his sister just successfully grew a human pancreas in an adolescent gibbon. <laughs> So she's close to curing diabetes. Why else would you grow a pancreas in a teenaged gibbon? <laughs> wow, you must be very proud. Why? They're not my accomplishments. <laughs> I have to urinate. Why are you doing this? You know the rules. You brought your mom to work. You must suffer. <laughs> That was fast. Oh, the middle stall was occupied. I'll have to try again later. It's totally understandable. In bladder voiding, as in real estate, it's location, location, location. So where were we? Howard lives with his mother, and Raj can't speak to women unless he's drunk. Go. Oh, that's fascinating. Selective mutism is quite rare. On the other hand, an adult Jewish male living with his mother is so common it borders on sociological cliché. It's just temporary. I pay rent. He lives in the same room where his bassinet was. You know, both selective mutism and an inability to separate from one's mother can stem from a pathological fear of women. It might explain why the two of you have created an ersatz homosexual marriage to satisfy your need for intimacy.
Say what? That's basically what I just said. You brought your husband to work. You know the rules. Crazy old lady! So, Howard, have you and Rajesh finally summoned the courage to express your latent homosexual feelings towards one another? <laughs> what? No! <clears throat> Why not? Because we don't have latent homosexual feelings toward one another. I see. No, really, I have a girlfriend now. And where is she this evening? She had to go out of town. Her grandmother died. I see. Her grandmother died. Dude, honest to God. <clears throat> Leonard, tell her I have a girlfriend. I don't know what you're talking about. I really don't know what I'm talking about. Tell her I have a girlfriend. All right. He has a girlfriend. <laughs> Her name is Bernadette. She's working as a waitress, but she's going to school to be a microbiologist. Howard, keep in mind that the more passionately you stick to this construct, the more you're hurting your partner. <laughs> you really think your lips in my ear is helping? Hi. Sorry I'm late. Oh, glad you're here. Uh, sit down. I'll get you a plate. Mom, you remember Penny? Oh, yes. The waitress slash actress with the unresolved father issues. <laughs> Has he finally come to terms with his little slugger growing breasts? Well, he sent me a football and a catcher's mitt for Christmas, so I'm gonna say no. If it helps, we're all good with your breasts. Classic overcompensation. Oh, speaking of fathers, Leonard, that reminds me, I'm divorcing yours. What? Yes, he was cheating on me. No! Yeah, with some waitress from the university cafeteria. Can you believe it? A waitress. Oh, no offense, dear. No, it sounded like a compliment. When did this happen? Well, let's see. Sheldon, when did I leave Leonard's father? September 22nd. Oh, yes, that's right. The weekend after Leonard's dog died. Mitzi's dead? She was old and blind, Leonard. What choice did we have? I don't believe this. Why am I the last to know? Excuse me, Leonard. I am the one who's getting a divorce. Mitzi is the one who is dead. Why are you the one making a fuss? <laughs> You're right. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm way out of line. So, Penny, what's new in your life? <laughs> Nothing. Not a damn thing. Leonard! Sunny boy! <laughs> Your mommy wants to talk to you. The hell is going on? You're in trouble. Why didn't you tell me you were tapping my homegirl? <laughs> Did I say that right? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Are you guys drunk? Well, I hope so. Otherwise, why would we have stopped at Del Taco? <laughs> Now, how could you not tell me you were in a relationship with this lovely, charming young woman? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Is it because she's uneducated, trapped in a menial service position? What the hell happened to lovely and charming? How come you didn't tell me that you and father were getting a divorce? How come you didn't tell me you had surgery? How come you didn't tell me my dog died? <laughs> what I hear you saying is that you want a more intimate mother-son relationship? I do. <laughs> there. It's late. Now, go to bed. <laughs> I'm 
getting a warm feeling spreading through my heart. That's the Del Taco. Why is Leonard softly banging his head against his bedroom door? Speaking of warm feelings, come here. No, I'd rather have the bus boy. I honestly didn't believe Amy when she told me she had a boyfriend. I assure you, I am quite real and I'm having regular intercourse with your daughter. What? Oh, yes. We are like wild animals in heat. It's a wonder neither of us has been hurt. Amy, what is he saying? You wanted me to have a boyfriend, Mother. Well, here he is. <laughs> have to sign off now. My hunger for Sheldon is stirring in my loins. Oh, yes. It's time for me to make love to your daughter's vagina. <laughs> Thank you, Sheldon. That went very well. Agreed. Amy, I find myself wondering if we should actually engage in coitus at least one time in our relationship. Bazinga. <laughs> Bedtime, please show yourself out. She's great, huh? She's a lovely girl, cute as a button. That's good to hear, because I've got some news. I hope it's good news, because I've got nothing but disappointment in here. <laughs> Bernadette and I are getting married. Ma, you too busy bearing down? <laughs> Ma? Oh, my gosh, Ma. Ma. Stand back, I'm gonna break the door down. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Ma, help! <laughs> Stop yelling. I'm not happy about this. What's the last thing you were ever happy about? Prospect of fried chicken. This is exciting. Back home, the diner on Route 4 serves sushi, but it's just cut up fish sticks and a side of Uncle Ben's. Put it on the menu in those kung fu letters, but that don't make it sushi. Uh, kung fu letters might not be politically correct. Oh, I thought the one we couldn't say was Ching Chong. Yeah, yeah, that too. So, Shelly, what's up with you and your friend Amy, if you don't mind a mother prying a bit? Well, there's actually big news on the Amy front. She's been studying the neurobiology of addiction in lower animals. She is this close to getting a starfish hooked on cocaine. <laughs> You have any idea what's going on with those two? Mm, it's kind of like the Loch Ness Monster. Maybe there's something there, maybe there isn't. We'll probably never know. But uh, sometimes it's fun to creep yourself out thinking about it. How are you doing on the young lady front? I hear you're in some sort of a long distance situation. Oh, yeah, it's Raj's sister. It's kind of tough. She's in India. Also, her parents aren't happy she's dating someone white. Oh, that's a funny turn, isn't it? You, you never think about it going the other way. <laughs> well, you can't force things. You need to figure out if you're in a relationship or if you're just calling it one. It's like they say, a cat can have kittens in the oven, but that don't make them biscuits. <laughs> and that reminds me of another saying, you can lead a chicken to Crisco, but you can't make your mother fry it. <laughs> Sheldon, you pester me one more time about chicken, I will put you over my knee right here in this restaurant. Please pester her, please, for me. Hey, give me the flowers and pie. But if we show up and you're holding them, she'll think they're only from you. They are only from me. You said the gift of you was enough. <laughs> yes, but now that I've seen what the gift of me with flowers and pie looks like, there's no going back. 
way. I can't wait to see the look on her face. We're leaving right now. What's wrong? Nothing. What's wrong? Tell me what's going on. I saw my mommy with a naked man and she was trying to be a mommy again. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Good luck. You, aren't you gonna come with me? While you confront your mother about her sex life, I'd rather go back to that bar in assless chaps. <laughs> Mother, mother, mother. Shelly, I'm so glad you're here. I saw you having naked sex. <laughs> what are you talking about? Earlier, I came here to surprise you. I looked in the window and I saw you with a man. Oh, Shelly, I'm so sorry. Come in. Um. Maybe we should sit down and talk about this. Can you recommend a surface you haven't had coitus on? <laughs> That's not funny. Maybe we should sit at the table. <laughs> well, I'm sure that uh, you have a lot of questions. Who was he? His name is Ron. I met him at my prayer group. How long have you been involved with him? A few months. And of those few months, how long have you been a demented sex pervert? <laughs> that is no way to speak to your mother. Perhaps not. But it is a way to speak to a woman who quoted the Bible to me my whole life and then desecrates one of Ethan Allen's finest sofas. I will give you one opportunity, young man, to apologize. Or what? Or I will send you to your room. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I am a grown man. I am a professional scientist, and I currently occupy the moral high ground. Go to your room. But I occupy the moral high ground. Go to your room but I'm a professional scientist. Go to your room. I'm a grown man. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Are you ready to discuss this calmly like adults? I am. Shelly, I'm sorry that you saw what you saw. I know that this is hard for you. I think what most upsets me about it, Mother, is the hypocrisy. Doesn't this contradict all the religious rules you've been espousing your whole life? You're right, it does. And it's something that I'm struggling with these days. Then why are you doing it? Because I'm not perfect, Shelly. And that man's booty is. <laughs> Well, this is confusing for me. But I don't want to stand in the way of your happiness. So I'll condemn you internally while maintaining an outward appearance of acceptance. That is very Christian of you. But, Mother, if you're going to conduct your life in this fashion, then I should let you know that the world has changed since you were a young woman. You know, it's not all sock hops, soda jerks, and segregation anymore. How old do you think I am? My point is that you're going to need to be careful. You used to be protected by your pre-enlightenment mythology, but now you're going to need a stronger friend named Latex. Are you having the sex talk with me? Well, someone has to. Oh, dear Lord. You, what, no, don't look to him. He's mad at you right now. <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought you moved out. Oh, yeah, I was going to, and then Debbie and I got to talking over dinner the other night. I didn't have any place to go. She likes having me around, so we both said, why leave at the same time? <laughs> uh, this is precious. <laughs> that precious. <laughs> I'd like to back you up, but it sounds like it was pretty precious.
Be right there, Dab Dab. <laughs> and they're probably on her head. <laughs> or in her neck. Listen. <laughs> you staying here seems like something she would have talked to me about. Well, maybe if you called your mother more often, you'd know. You lost my mother's ashes? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that sometimes bags are misrouted. All right, fine. Where did you misroute the only woman who ever loved me? The first one, first, I met first. I just need some information. Uh, what's the flight number? 816. I really did mean first. Just drop it. <laughs> And can you describe the bag? Um, well, it's, uh, black. There's a red ribbon tied to the handle. The world's greatest mom is in the shoe compartment. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Wallowitz, as far as I can tell, your bag arrived in Los Angeles. So uh, where is it? I don't know. Perhaps somebody took it off the carousel by mistake? So some stranger has my mom? Is that what you're telling me? My poor mother can be anywhere in Los Angeles right now. I... I wish I was telling you that. Um, but the passenger could have gotten on an international flight. Okay, great. So your entire job is to find lost luggage and you've narrowed down the location of my mother to the planet Earth. I'm sorry. W would 500 frequent flyer miles help? That could get you to Sacramento. Great news, your bag was returned. Oh, thank God. It's okay, she's here, Ma's here. Hi. Thank you so much. Ma, I'm sorry I didn't take you to the airport. I just want you to know that I'll never forgive myself for being so selfish. And I promise to keep you close for the rest of my life. Oh no, that thing's gonna end up in my bedroom. <laughs> Dr. Hofstadter, I want you to meet my mother, Mary. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. How was your flight? Very pleasant. And yours? Lovely. Almost as if someone, not saying who, was watching over the plane. <laughs> You're kidding, right? <laughs> subtle, Mom. Real subtle. Hey, sorry I got caught up at work. Hi, Beverly. Hello. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> you remember my mother. Oh, yes. Hi, Mary. Good to see you again, dear. Uh, yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, Mom, you haven't seen Penny since we got engaged. Yeah, let me show you the ring. Oh, lovely. Must have been very expensive. No, oh, no, not at all. No, we uh, found a place online that uh, repurposes diamond drill bits. <laughs> we did not. That's not true. <laughs> Can I speak to you alone for a second? Oh, sure. It came from Tiffany's. <gasps> you mean the box, right? Keep walking. Really doesn't matter to me how much he spent on the ring. I think. <laughs> no, we're not in a rush. We'll set a date when the time is right. It doesn't matter, sweetie. The moment a man lays with a woman, they are married in the eyes of the Lord. Ugh. <laughs> the Bible is ugh. You? No, I'm sorry, that was inappropriate. As a psychiatrist, I know how important people's superstitions can be to them. You want to talk about superstitions? Sheldon sent me the books you wrote, all that nonsense about super egos and ids. What bull dropped that on the barn floor? His name is Sigmund Freud. Hey, look at that. You both believe in Jewish bearded guys. <laughs> Stay out of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least the bearded man that I believe in preaches love and compassion. All your talks about is why you hold in your poop and want to crawl back inside your mama. It's fascinating. How can someone as enlightened as Sheldon come from someone like you? I know the answer. You're not going to like it. <laughs> Try me. When I was pregnant with Shelly, I was driving to church, and I was praying to the Lord to give me a son smarter than his dumbass daddy. <laughs> and I looked over, and I saw a Jesus bobblehead in the Subaru next to me nodding yes. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? It means... I can't believe we're having this conversation. Well, do it some more. Maybe knock some sense into yourself. Oh, we 
to all stop hitting ourselves and talk about something safe, you know, like shoes or how cute little Chinese babies are. It is not my fault that your mother likes me better than she likes you. Oh, don't flatter yourself. She likes everybody better than she likes me. I'm just feeling a little guilty about all the trouble I've caused. Oh, so am I. You made God sad today, Mom. <laughs> Sheldon, they haven't done anything wrong. I think it's nice they're hitting it off. Well, that's no reason to rush into anything. I mean, look at us. We took things remarkably slow. You and I, we didn't even hold hands for two years. It's a lot hotter than it sounds. You're a patient young lady. Hey, hey she's mine. Take a cold shower, Grandpa. There's a lot of traffic. Are we going to be OK? You'll be at the airport an hour before your flight. Good, thank you. Plenty of time for you to meet another geriatric boy toy. Hey, I will not have you be disrespectful to me. Yes, ma'am. Sheldon, your mother's an attractive woman. You need to get used to the fact that men are going to be interested in her. And you need to drive the car and mind your business. I will not have you be disrespectful to me. But you're not my mother. Don't you be disrespectful to her. Yes, ma'am. You'll get there. You just got to put some zing on it. That's a nice one. Was it yours when you were little? My dad built it for me. Wow, it's so cute. This was the husband, this was the wife. They'd go out on adventures together, cruises, skiing, horseback riding. That was really me just duct taping them to our dog. <laughs> and did they have kids? They did. But the mommy and daddy didn't like them, so they shipped them off to an orphanage I made out of a shoebox. <laughs> yeah, that's not worrisome at all. <laughs> Every girl dreams about being a mom. Sometimes you think you're never gonna have kids, and one day you wake up and you're pregnant. And it doesn't matter that your career's going great right now and that you and your husband never even got to go anywhere and take to a dog. <laughs> well, I skipped spin class for this. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, I mean, shouldn't we just eat? You know, I mean, God did take time out of his busy schedule to bless these sloppy Joes. Come on, Shelly, tell me your news. All right, this is on you. <clears throat> Amy and I are living together in sin like a couple of New Yorkers. <laughs> now, while you scold us, I'm going to get a knife and a fork. Joe may be sloppy, but Sheldon's not. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me know, and I, for one, am thrilled. What? Where's the judgment? Where's the fire and brimstone? But where's the part where you tell us we're going to hell? And I say, have you seen the size of the bugs outside? We're already there. Obviously, I would prefer if you weren't living out of wedlock, but given your special circumstances, I'm very happy for you. And what special circumstances are those? How do I put this? By your third birthday, you had memorized over a thousand different kinds of trains. And I never imagined a woman getting aboard any of them. What's it? You thought I was going to be alone for the rest of my life? No, just for the middle part. Because at the end, I assumed there'd be nurses. Well, this is highly insulting. Sheldon, don't overreact. I'm the child she was worried about. I have a brother and sister whose combined intellectual wattage couldn't power a potato clock. <laughs> if I spotted them the potato. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what? Well, I was in my room. I couldn't hear what they were saying. Hi, Pen. Oh, hello, Leonard. <laughs> hello, Mother. How are you? Fine. And you? I'm great. Well, it's been lovely catching up. No, 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 wait, hang on, we need to talk. Oh, brother. I want to know, why aren't you proud of me? Well, isn't the real question, why aren't you proud of yourself? No, that, that is a question, and I ask it a lot. <laughs> but let's stick with the one I asked you. But why do you think I'm not proud of you? Because you never say it? But two days into chatting with Penny, and you can't stop telling her how great she is. She is great. 
Honestly, of all of my children's spouses, she's the one that I'm most impressed by. Seriously? Yes. She's confident, she's thoughtful, and she never complained about you once. I know what kind of strength that takes. <laughs> so, Penny's your favorite? I suppose she is. You married well, Leonard, and for that, I am proud of you. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm also proud of how hard you're trying not to cry. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to hang up now? Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> Penny, can I have a moment alone? Yeah, hi. <laughs> have you calmed down? No, I'm not calm. You really hurt me. That wasn't my intention. It doesn't matter what you intended. What matters is the way you made me feel. Actually, the way you've always made me feel. I see. So you're here to tell me all the ways that I failed you as a mother. Yeah. And get comfortable, because it's a long list. Is it happening soon? <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're never going to change. If I want you to accept me for me, then I guess I'm going to have to accept you for you. So I forgive you. I didn't ask you to forgive Too me. bad. I forgive you anyway. <laughs> And I forgive myself for taking so long to do it. Oh my God, that feels so good. I must admit it, it does feel good. What does? You forgiving me. It means a lot. Thank you. <laughs>